again, it's it's a product, uh, and it's a product that offers uh, uh, quite advanced technology, uh, something that people haven't seen here before, and it would be far easier to advertise it to people if, again, if it was a phone or a camera, because you would just could simplify things and, and use a TV ad to get the message across here. You're not only trying to advertise the new technology, but also you want to uh, you want this technology to be seen by people as meaningful to them and useful to to their academic needs. And we both, or everyone knows, that um, there's so much depth in the process of university learning and teaching uh, that. It's, I would advise against uh, trying to simplify that, that uh, the, the, the usefulness of ePortfolio in that context. We offered a range of workshops, a range of sessions to all schools that might be interested in this. And, and sometimes people didn't know they were interested, so we would, we would approach them more directly and say, here we are, we're organizing an, uh, a 60-minute session feel free to come along and, and have a look and that always produces or, or leaves us with some people who want to go further and want to implement it. So from my point of view, I'm interested in, in, in getting the message across, speaking directly to, to people on the ground, uh, tutors, uh, course organizers, um, or uh, directors of schools or institutes, heads of departments. like. I call them people that are on the ground because they're not in charge of our global uh, university-wide uh, strategies or policies because as you realize, as many people would realize, it's very difficult to, um, to enforce uh, the use of new technologies across the whole of the university, especially if we're dealing with, with uh, such an old university and diverse one as, as ours. So I would say we're making progress, but it's a nice granular progress. So every six months or every semester or every year, uh, our customer base is expanding. And, and this year, actually, I'm, I'm just snowed under with, with, with emails from people who've started just at the beginning of semester using PebblePad. And never underestimate their knowledge because they may appear completely ignorant and, but they always do something, uh, they, they always know something. Uh, and with Facebook, Twitter and all those online services that students commonly use these days, they, they have some sort of technical knowledge already. Uh, so bear those things in mind and try to see it from their perspective. Try to imagine that you're sitting in that lecture theatre and this person from information services is coming and they they are just talking to you about something. What is it? And and you want to, you're looking for a solution here. You're not looking for a, a great heap of e-portfolio knowledge. You're looking for a solution to your current problem as a student. And you're in this case submitting a dissertation in a more attractive and 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 and, and better way. So I would explain what the final result might look like and then go step by step how you come up with that uh, final result. The resistance usually comes from people who see PebblePad as that limited e-portfolio thing where you collect pictures and pieces of text or learning artifacts and then you present them to show off. If, if they see it that way, they will most many of them might be resisting uh, this change because they see it again, it's just too simple to doesn't suit doesn't uh, suit their needs. All I'm trying to do is find out more about them, and again, going back to doing my PG cert, uh, trying to to learn more about their local academic needs, uh, because there are processes they they already have in place that, that can be either revolution revolutionized or gently improved. With, with our technologies. All I would say to, to, to describe the people that are, might be resisting ePortfolio is that each one of them is different and they are resisting it for different reasons. So you have to get to know them, you have to become their friend uh, and, and 
just try to be honest with them as possible about what you're trying to do because because I'm very fortunate I'm not a car salesman I don't have to reach a certain number of accounts every month to to justify what I'm doing uh, I'm, I'm speaking to, to, to people who genuinely may need those types of services as an example um, just talking strictly about PebblePad and again that gateway component within PebblePad that allows people to submit assignments formally uh, even if they don't use any other ePortfolio components of it we, we have like a school of law uh, or postgraduate elements within it who don't do any ePortfolio related work at the moment however they recognized that this element of, of gateway uh, and assignment submission might be useful to them they get to know that and slowly they discover other areas of the system that uh, might come useful especially with uh, courses or programs that are aimed at producing professionals such as nurses or, or, or teachers doctors or vets or lawyers uh, they already have certain processes in place and um, so the most uh, obvious thing is to take those into the digital um, sphere and um, replicate what they're doing on paper or what they're doing physically face to face and just do that online and uh, some wonderful examples we have from from the school of uh, veterinary uh, studies where they have a number of forms the students have to sign and submit number of uh, forms that students have to fill out with data when they start studying in the first year so those immediately were moved online uh, and now being uh, submitted officially within the tool and then it's important that each student has got their personal ePortfolio because that it's signed and it, it comes with a name it's official um, so it's easier then to move all those forms that are on paper and again they're personal and official as well easier to move them online uh, we also have um, this year one of those interesting projects uh, postgraduate um, postgraduates in the school of law they are speaking to their supervisors um, while uh, working on their PhD thesis um, they are speaking to them through blogs and through learning diaries um, exchanging comments so those meetings that were taking place in the room they're still taking place but uh, there's loads more communication happening online between the supervisor and a student that's now recorded and can be kept for uh, students' records or, uh, or our supervisors' records as well. If I was to go back and start the whole thing again, I would pay more attention to how this service and how this technology is seen by people who weren't exposed to it in the first place. It's just important to, to know your customers before you even talk to them because uh, that first impression is crucial and, and you may lose a lot of people by not understanding what they really want and uh, I've always tried to, to, to do that to, to, to get to know them and to understand but because I didn't years ago I didn't simply I didn't have that knowledge so I would advise everyone uh, when they're starting off just do your research and know exactly whom you're talking to and um, and what they need before you even start talking about technology before you start talk talking about tools and on the other hand always make sure that your technology is accessible that your IT system is not really an IT system but a little helpful tool that's just popping up somewhere easy to use and can do a lot if you spend time on it but it can be quickly utilized because it's accessible uh, for, for little things and the third one would be be aware of what's happening in the real world in that intellectual 
wasteland outside the university uh, with things like Facebook, Twitter, and don't discredit them just because they, they may be a bit uh, different from, from the academic world. Actually utilize them, link them, try to use those, and I personally am using the Facebook metaphor a lot when I speak to the students because it helps them to understand uh, why e-portfolios are useful. The first question I always ask uh, is, are you present online? And they usually say, yes, I'm present because I'm on Facebook or Twitter. If you were to impress someone in a professional and serious way, would you give them uh, access to your Facebook account or your Twitter? No. So, are you present online in a professional and serious way? No. Well, I've got something for you that will allow you to, to do that. 